All right. So this year, Nobel Prize in Chemistry is awarded to Caroline Bertossi, uh, Mortel Mendel, and Barry K. Sharpless. Now, uh, this has been given for their development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry. Now, these terms uh, look very, you know, very catchy, and uh, like it's very important for all of us to know that what exactly it is and wh what is so important about them that they have got Nobel Prize, right? So that's what we are going to do in this video. We are going to understand that what exactly is click chemistry and what is bioorthogonal chemistry, and we'll try to uh, go, like we'll try to go with a layman language uh, with touching chemistry a little bit so that you can explain it to anyone who asks you this, right? All right. So basically, this click chemistry is nothing but it's a concept. Okay, it's not a reaction. It's not a. Uh, it's not a field of chemistry. It's it's a concept. Okay. Now this concept was coined uh, not recently, but back in early to uh, like early 2000s or uh, late 90s, and it was coined by um, Barry Sharpless itself. And uh, the idea was pretty simple. Okay. It says click chemistry. In click chemistry, what we have to do, or what was the idea, was that you need to have two molecules, or but simple molecules you should have, and those molecules should be able to make connection together, or they should be able to club together to make bigger molecule. That was the basic idea about it. And the name uh, click chemistry was given. Actually, I'll tell you that it is basically because of uh, this. If you see, it's a, it's a buckle, okay? Yeah, a, like it is attached to each other. But just imagine that these are two molecules. This is one molecule, and this is the other molecule. And what that idea was that these two simple molecules should be able to club together like this. And this sound, this this click sound which you hear over here, that is from where that term. Click chemistry came. So the when they are going to club together, they are going to make this clip sound, uh, click sound, and that click is that click chemistry over it. Now, as you can see, this 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 clipping or this this clubbing of these two species, uh, consider them as two molecule, is basically very spontaneous, right? It is very specific also, and it is very robust. Like you don't have to give a lot of uh, you know, a lot of uh, things or a lot of criteria or a lot of conditions in order to get, uh, get this thing. So that was the basic idea by Barry and on that they worked and uh, like so uh, Barry Sharpless worked on this in USA and Martin Meldel was working on this in Denmark. So both their work like both of them and their lab came up with a particular reaction which was actually undergoing this type of or which was mimicking this type of uh, reaction okay so what they have done they have taken a particular molecule which has a azide group in it right so a molecule having azide group in it and another molecule which was alkyne group so basically if you just give a azide and a alkyne they are not going to react or or if they react also they are going to form a lot of molecules like it's not going to be a specific reaction they are going to form a lot of product over there so what they did is they saw that if the same reaction if you carry out in the presence of copper ion copper plus one ion so in that case the reaction was so accelerated the rate was very high and the specificity of the reaction was very high so a very good yield of a triazole compound was being getting right so when a particular azide containing uh, group reacts with uh, alkyl containing group they are going to club together and they are going to form a triazole molecule. So this concept opened up a very big opportunity because any part or any side, any side chain you can give to the azide part, any side chain you can give to the alkyl part, you just have to bring them together, you have to give them copper plus an ion and they are going to club together and you are going to get a bigger molecule. And that idea was so much used or that, that was so much useful that is still a lot of polymer chemists, a lot of material chemists, a uh, lot of people who are working with giant molecules, supramolecular molecules, they basically are working with this and they are using this uh, click chemistry in a very robust manner. And they are not just using single click, they are using a lot of clipping or a lot of clubbing of molecule. So if you have a particular molecule which has let's say three uh, azide groups, so it can clip or it can basically join or it can basically club with from the three side of three different alkyl. So, uh, uh, so that what makes this particular whole concept, this click chemistry concept, a very uh, you know useful concept. So, if you look at this particular reaction, it's nothing you know. It's it's what you have studied already in in your pericyclic reactions. 
This is basically a azide alkyne uh, cycloaddition reaction, right? Just it is catalyzed by the copper ion. That's what it is. So that's what this whole idea is about. So click chemistry is nothing but this much, okay? Now let's talk about that what is bio-orthogonal reaction and why it is related to it. So when this click chemistry came, when people started using it, especially these material chemists and these polymer chemists, at that time, uh, like people were trying to use this in the bio, uh, like in the bio field, in the biological world. But because of the toxicity of the copper ion, it cannot be used, right? Because in the biological system, there are very, like biological systems are very specific. They don't accept all the ions as such and copper ion is a toxic ion. So that's why it was not useful or uh, in that particular uh, way or in that raw manner, it could not have been used in the biological field. Now, why exactly you want to use this in the biological field? See, the idea was that if we will be able to use the same click chemistry in the biological field, we will be able to club anything with a particular molecule and we can tag that. Let's say if we have a drug molecule, we can tag that drug molecule to that particular enzyme or that particular uh, protein and we can see that where it is going. We can, we can basically look upon it that where exactly it is going. We can follow it by tagging it with some uh, fluorescent dye or with some colored dye, right? So it was useful for bio uh, imaging and uh, drug delivery and all. So that was the idea. But it was not uh, like it was not useful in that manner. Means the click chemistry of uh, Sharpless and Meldel, it was not being used in the biological uh, field as such. So here comes our third laureate, um, Caroline Bertusi. Uh, in the same time when this click chemistry was being developed, people were uh, like fascinated with that. So at that same time, she was also trying to work on this, and she was working with complex sugar molecules. Uh, known as glycans and these glycans are present on the membrane of the cell. So uh, she thought of somehow if we if we tag a azide group to these glycans, we will be able to proceed further, right? So uh, those who know biology a little bit or those who know cell culture and all, they might be aware about it that in, in order to tag or in order to uh, attach a particular molecule in a particular bi biological system or in a biological molecule, for example, bacteria, what you have to do is you have to provide it while doing the cell culture, okay? So you have to provide that environment so that it can eat only that bacteria is going to feed on that particular molecule. And during that process, it is going to regenerate it through the biological mechanism. Uh, this is all called bioengineering and all. So there comes and that that is the process where basically you can tag uh, that azide group in that glycans. Now, once these azide group are now present in the glycans, half of the work is done. But still, a lot of things are left because now azide group is there. You cannot bring alkyne and you can just react with it because there again you will need that copper ion which is again toxic. So uh, here what Bertosi has worked on, she took a strained alkyne. Now strained alkyne for that, uh, just consider a cyclooctane alkyne or so cyclooctyne for the sake. And let's say this is uh, that cyclooctyne is attached or it is tagged with some fluorescent dye, with some green colored dye, right? Now what happens that since it is a eight membered ring and you know eight membered ring is not planar, it is puckered in shape, because of that ring strain, that alkyne group is very reactive of, over there, right? Now since that octane, uh, that alkyne group is so reactive in that uh, cyclooctane ring or the cy that eight membered ring, that when you are going to bring it near to or when you are uh, like, uh, when you are keeping both of them and you are providing sufficient conditions and appropriate conditions, that azide group which was there in the glycan and this strained alkyne is going to react together. And that's where again this click chemistry is going to work. So basically this is also a click chemistry but in the absence of any ion. So this is called metal free click chemistry or bio orthogonal reaction or bio orthogonal chemistry because here you are not using any uh, ion as such uh, you are basically just providing sufficient conditions and you are bringing a strained alkyne in, in uh, like in place of any normal alkyne right so what happened after this uh, clubbing of these azide uh, group and this alkyne same uh, that type of reaction which we have seen in the uh, in the berry uh, reaction or in the in the previous uh, click chemistry in the non biological click chemistry similar thing happens and now both of them are intact with each other right so by this, what was done by uh, like Bertosi is she uh, tagged a fluorescent dye in that eight-membered ring, and when it 
uh, got clubbed with that particular azide group with the glycan that that dye or that fluorescent compound was present all over the uh, like cell membrane so you can see on this screen right now this image it is from her paper itself uh, you will be able to see that the cell membrane are green in color they are shining green in color this is microscopy image that they are green in color because they they are nothing but that fluorescent dye and it is attached to that glycan which is present on the cell membrane inside the cell the nucleus are represented in the blue color that is just to show that just to differentiate it but you have to focus on the cell membrane and that is what it is they are green in color so that's where this whole thing comes in so if you look upon if you just look upon the overall story both are same uh, both of them are actually click chemistry only but just because it is being done in the biological system that's why we are calling it as bio orthogonal chemistry and the other one is as a click chemistry so both of them are processes which have opened up a big field a huge field uh, for the future right so still like as i told you these works has been done in early 2000s so still like if you will go to some polymer chemist or some material chemistry will find that they are using this click chemistry in order to generate bigger molecules and this has been uh, like people are using it and people will be using it to generate complex molecule to make more powerful materials and uh, then in the bio field they will be using it in order to uh, you know uh, tag a molecule in order to diagnose a particular uh, disease for example if you if you tag a particular cell you will be able to see that where that if that is a cancer cell if you able to tag that cancer cell you'll be able to see that uh, how that cancer uh, cell is increasing so all these things are the uses of these uh, like uh, processes or these concept which these three nobel laureates have uh, given to us there the the field is vast the scope is vast it can be used in many ways and uh, that's where uh, this nobel prize has been given to them so that's what we say that uh, their work which they have done is for the greater benefit of the humankind and that's why they have been awarded with the nobel prize and i hope you have understood now that what exactly this click chemistry is and if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment sections below but yeah if somebody asks you that what click chemistry is why like they have been given nobel prize you will be able to explain them right also share this video with your friends so that they also get to know about it thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care